Hey guys, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, or if you're watching this on a later date, Happy Thursday, or whatever. Welcome to uh, the third Polyphonic Q&A. Before we get started, I want to give a big shout out to all my patrons on Patreon. You guys help make this possible. Um, and I also want to shout out my merch. We have dope Polyphonic posters. If it's December 28th or whatever today is, and you're still looking for Christmas presents... Well, you know, buy a Polyphonic poster. They're great. I'm, I've almost sold enough that I can start looking into doing a second line of posters, which would be a ton of fun. So yeah, check out the posters. I put a lot of work into them. I'm really proud of them. I think they look really cool. And yeah, it's a great way to support the channel. Uh, once again, I'm off script, so this Q&A is going to be bumpy. So let's dive into the questions. Again, sorry if I didn't get to your question there were a ton of questions. I tried to answer a diverse set and uh, tried to get stuff in there. So yeah, enjoy. And if you didn't get to me this time, you can always ask me stuff on Twitter and I'll answer. Or you can uh, hope for another Q&A, which I'll probably do in the future. All right, 10,000 subs with no videos, please. Asked me to talk about my favorite bands. I'll expand this to artists generally, not just bands, because a lot of my favorite artists aren't bands. Bob Dylan is an all-time favorite for me. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, one of the bands that really influenced me and really was seminal for me growing up was Led Zeppelin. I love Led Zeppelin. Steely Dan are one of my favorites. Blue Rodeo, July Talk, uh, The Dead Kennedys. Alexis on Fire. Oh, I guess I gotta put Pink Floyd in my favorites. David Bowie. I, there's, there's a whole lot of artists that I like, um, but if I needed to pick a few favorite, it would probably be something like Bob Dylan, Bowie, Jack White, Led Zeppelin, Kendrick Lamar, Miles Davis, I don't know, there's a lot. Uh, Mateja asks, do I plan on doing any videos on the following artists, Frank Zappa, Prince, and Stevie Wonder? Uh, and I have gotten a lot of comments and questions to this effect. Yeah, probably. I don't really know who I'm going to do a video on until I write the script, until an angle approaches me. So to answer, everyone's always asking, and I appreciate the request. I like you guys letting me know what you want to see. But generally, I don't really know what I'm going to do until it's done. But if they're a big, interesting artist, probably someday. Zambo4816 asked if I could put together a dream group with any instruments and members alive or dead, who would they be? I, I think the dream group is fun, but I also think that there's something to be said for how the chemistry of bands works together and the best instrumentalists playing together wouldn't necessarily be the best band. So I, I, I always find these tough to, tough to listen to because if I was to put together a dream group, it would probably be something like John Paul Jones on bass and keyboards, Jimmy Page on guitar, John Bonham on drums, and I don't know, maybe Robert Plant as a front man. Uh, why do I hate Brian Adams? He knows what he did. How do I think music is going to evolve from where it is now? We're, we're approaching a place where genre is disappearing. It'll still always exist as a tool, but more and more things are kind of fading together. And I think that's the future of music is it's, it's not uncommon to hear acoustic guitars on a rap song, to hear metal thrown together with pop, to hear all of this stuff kind of coming together. And other than that, I think it's hard to... It's, it's hard to predict where music's going to evolve to next. The biggest thing is music tends to evolve with technology. As new musical technologies come out, they always, always kind of set the trend. The electric guitar led to rock and roll. The synthesizer led to the 80s. The sampler helped hip-hop a lot. And then even digital music created the rise of EDM. So I think really it depends what technology comes out next. So we might see more music playing with uh, AIs or things like that. I don't really know. I think that that's fun to speculate, but impossible to tell. Hendrix Jimmy asks, I always make videos about artists or songs that I like. Are we going to see one about something that I don't like? Um, no, I have no desire to do anything on something I don't like. I don't think that's the role that Polyphonic serves. Uh, I'm not a music critic. I think music criticism is very important, and I think it serves a vital role, but I think that my space is to look at the good sides of things, to look at 
why things are amazing. And I think that sometimes it's far too easy to say why you hate something. And it's just not, not for me, not what I want to do with polyphonic. I don't want to interject that kind of negativity into my videos. I would much rather just celebrate good music. Justin Good asked an interesting question, which is that I say all music has merit, and he says, are there examples where I think music has less merit? He says, say some of these newer rappers that are super generic and do it just for the money. I think that it's a difficult question because I personally, there's things that I personally don't enjoy, but I think that saying music made for money doesn't have merit is really a problem. I mean, Paul McCartney and John Lennon used to sit down and say, let's write a swimming pool, right? And a lot of the Beatles songs were, especially early Beatles, is just kind of generic pop at the time. It was really, really good pop, but it was pop written to make money. And I think that the, the idea that making music to make money, you can't make good art is really, really flawed because most people won't admit it, but money is a factor for a ton of musicians and a ton of musicians making great stuff. So I think even these newer rappers that you say are super generic and just do it for the money, um, I've, I've created things with, with a commercial band, but still been proud of the work, uh, that I put in. So no, I think, I think if, if these people are proud of what they do, if they enjoy what they do, if even one person listens and thinks it's a good banger, then there's merit to it. Simon Jew asks, I'm from Ottawa. Was I involved in the punk scene here? If so, what are my favorite local artists? So yeah, kind of. I, I had a podcast that interviewed a lot of Ottawa bands uh, for a while. Um, and I, I wasn't super involved in the punk scene, but I interviewed some punk bands and I went to some Ottawa punk shows and stuff. I've got, uh, I've got some friends that were in Suits and Tukes, which were a great Ottawa ska punk band. Shout out to them. Uh, I also, similar to ska, really, really loved the Cardboard Crowns. Yeah, I've got, uh, other, other general local Ottawa groups I like. Um, I liked Monday I Retire a lot. The Adding Machine were an amazing hip-hop group from Ottawa. Oh, also Black Denim were one of my favorite local Ottawa groups. I never interviewed them for the podcast, but I really like Black Denim. There's, there's really a ton of great Ottawa bands, so you guys should, you guys should check them out. Juan Cruz Livio asks, what's the definition of music for me? Is there a point in experimental music when it ceases to be music? Uh, that's a good question, and again, one that I don't really know the answer to. I mean, something like Metal Machine Music by Lou Reed is really pushing the boundaries of what I would consider music, but I also think that's the point of it. I think it's meant to challenge our assumptions of what music is. Even something like, like 433, I don't actually really think is music. I think it's a really cool thought experiment. Um, but I do think that for me to personally consider it music, there needs to be some level of, I guess for lack of a better word, some level of musicality. It's tough to say though, I don't know, and I might cut this question. Uh, Kit Paulson asks, do I think the album as a medium is dying or deteriorating? I think the album was dying for a while, but I think it's really starting to come back. I think we're seeing, uh, in, in hip hop, a ton of artists doing really cool conceptual stuff that is undoubtedly an album, stuff like what Kendrick Lamar has done and Vince Staples has done and things like that. And then generally, I think that for a while the album was dying uh, because of the rise of digital, but now people have uh, have understood that there's an issue there. And even, and even in things like, even in uh, the pop realm, something like 1989 by Taylor Swift is an album in my mind. It's very cohesive and feels like an album. So I think the album was dying for a little bit, um, but I think it's really, it's really coming back. And I think there's people doing cool stuff and pushing our ideas of, of what the album is. Gareth Fuller asks if I have any formal music training or did I just teach myself? I have some level of music training. I had a great music teacher in high school that taught me a lot. Shout out to Mr. Sheridan. And I also took piano lessons uh, and have done a fair amount of reading. I did a bit of musicology in my undergrad, but I'm not super formally trained in anything. And a lot of the theory stuff that I do, I'm kind of researching as, as I go. I don't 
have a, an intense knowledge of theory. I have a cursory knowledge. Rockstar1123 asked a bunch of questions, but the one I'm going to answer is he asked, what are my thoughts on Greta Van Fleet and other bands with classic rock aesthetic? Um, I think it's good. I think people are acting as if this is something new, but there's always been blues rock based bands through the 80s, 90s and 2000s. There were a ton of these classic rock uh, aesthetic bands like what what was the White Stripes, if not that. Right. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily anything new. And I think they're good. I think it's just continuing a long trend of of music influenced by this stuff right mateo asks if i listen to classical music sometimes i should listen to more classical music and the stuff i do listen to is like i, I don't know classical that well but there's there's some stuff i like i like tchaikovsky a lot i like dvorak dvorak however you you're supposed to pronounce his name i always get it wrong i really like him uh and gustav holst is a favorite i'm gonna do a video on the planets sometime uh but i don't listen to nearly enough classical if you have any good classical recommendations let me know um i want to listen to more kellen moros asks do i have a favorite super group uh yeah the dead weather um also the raconteurs uh also i liked them crooked vultures a lot they were really good too and do led zeppelin count as a super group i think they do stefan asks have i thought to publish the audio track of my videos as a podcast I don't know. Would you guys listen? Do you think there's an audience for that? If I just like straight up exported uh, my audio tracks and put them somewhere, I could do that. I mean, my worry there is there's weird rights with music sometimes. But yeah, let me know if you guys think that you'd like that. Peter Lawson asks, what's my favorite lyric of all time? Uh, it would be, ain't it just like the night to play tricks when you're trying to be so quiet? We sit here stranded, though we're all doing our best to deny it. From Bob Dylan's uh, Visions of Joanna. Um, and then second would probably be, uh, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I really, 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 really want to zig a zig ah. Um, that's the Spice Girls. Uh, so just beautiful poetry on both counts. Ethan Blockster asks, how do I decide on the style of my videos? I, I use a lot of things. A lot of the time, one of my goals is to have the aesthetic contribute to the message. Um, so this comes most clearly in like kind of the videos I've done on punk. I have a very, I try to create a DIY punk style. Um, I, I always try to, to make it so that the music I'm talking about somehow matches uh what i'm saying so that's a goal and then i also there's a couple tools i use i use something called color mind to develop color schemes and it's it's a fantastic site shout out to them uh and i really a lot of the time i'll make a title card first like my thumbnail i'll make that first and then kind of reverse engineer that look into an aesthetic for a video um and it's a lot of messing around, a lot of just looking for inspiration online, uh, pulling from films, pulling from aesthetics that I've just enjoyed before and trying to uh, kind of imitate them myself and add my own spin on them. Stephen Ross asks, what am I thought on Stan Rogers and how the Leafs are doing? Uh, the Leafs are doing great. Nylander signed. Tavares is a Leaf uh, and is looking fantastic. I have more more subtle thoughts on this, but I'm not going to get into them because there's probably like four people that are interested in my takes on the Leafs zone exits and such. My thoughts on Stan Rogers are I'm a drunken man on a Halifax pier, the last of Barrett's privateers. Uh, we'll, we'll fire no guns, shed no tears, etc. Pierre Olivier Landry asks about favorite artists that are currently working on new stuff. Which next album release am I hyped for? I, I guess the biggest one, I don't even know if he's currently working, but whatever Kendrick has coming next, he's on a run of some of the greatest albums of all time. So I'm really excited to see if he can keep that going. Aston Richardson asks, will I be doing any more of the posters? Yes, I really want to make some more. I, I want to make some limited runs, but also there's some logistical stuff. It'll happen eventually. I promise. I'm just not sure when. As people buy the original round of posters, it makes it more likely that I'm going to bring uh, new posters in sooner. Oscar Mike asked a number of questions, but the one I'm going to answer is, what's my most unpopular opinion about music in general? 
Uh, I have a lot of opinions that I think would be unpopular. Generally, my approach that I think all music has merit, uh, I think is pretty unpopular. But the take that the take that'll get people riled up probably is I uh, I am I am a staunch auto tune defender. I think I think auto tune can be overused, but I think auto tune is a really really cool technology that's been used to do some amazing stuff. And I think people are too quick to write it off and act like it's killing music or some bullshit. I think that's all the questions that I'm going to do for today. Um, sorry if I didn't get to yours. Again, hit me up on Twitter and I'll give you some answers. I might try doing a live Q&A sometime if you guys would have interest in that. Let me know. Um, again, just thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really excited to go into the new year of Polyphonic. I've hit, I feel like I've hit a, a new level in my editing um, and you're going to see that in some of the videos coming out soon so I'm really hyped about that so keep an eye out for that and in the meantime thanks for watching liking subscribing spreading the good word and again a huge shout out to all my patrons who help make this possible I'm a one-man team so your guys financial aid really helps support me and helps pay bills and things like that which which are important if I'm gonna keep making this content uh, so you guys are amazing thank you so much Go check out my merch, and, and thanks for watching. Uh, I love all of you guys. Happy holidays.